Yeah, so I'm normally based in Indonesia. Um, so I've been there for seven seven years. Um, so I just came back to have my baby. Um, and at some point we'll go back. I was fortunate because he latched on straight away. I produced a good, you know, quality, um, not quality, quantity of milk. Um, the only issue is I needed some adju adjustment with the latch. So I didn't actually, with the support and temper of the NHS, I, it was quite limited what I needed. Um, so I was quite fortunate that my bre breastfeeding was quite smooth, other than the cluster feed. It's and the midwives I dealt with were, were very good and my health kept, they all seemed quite knowledgeable from what I know. But, but that's one of the challenges I think of having a baby is we don't know. I don't know anything about babies. So when people tell you stuff, you assume it's right because you just don't know. And one of my biggest stresses is what do I not know? <laughs> All the time, I'm like, I should be reading more. I should be watching videos. I should be doing classes. There's a wealth of information and I just don't know. And I think as a mother, you rely on midwives, healthcare, because you just, you don't know. Like I'd go to pre -nate. Oh, I when I was in the midwife, she was going through my birth plan and she was like, oh, do you want the vitamin K in injection when you give birth? And I was like, I don't know what that is. Like, I've literally no idea. And they often they talk to you like, you know, and that is also a big challenge, I think, because often you just like, I have no idea what you're talking about, but they talk in a sense of, you know what I'm talking about. And you're like, I don't know. Before I had a baby I was really like carefree like with my job I work in the rainforest I'd go to forest fires um you know I'd we have snakes in our camp so I'm just like yeah it's okay you know whatever it's fine not really thinking about the dangers you know going to dangerous places but now since I've had a baby I feel really vulnerable and even going to the park I'm like oh there's people playing football that football might hit us or this person's going past on a bike that bike might hit, you know, he might go into the pram or something. So I'm kind of like looking for dangers everywhere, which I never had that before because of just the nature of who I am and my job. But I'd say since I gave birth, that's definitely been a big change for me. It's been amazing. Like I think the NHS, they were, I think I was determined to breastfeed and I did some courses online, like the baby academy do online breastfeeding courses um, I, I read a lot of books just because I was I was determined to do it so I was like if I'm going to do it I need to understand it because I didn't understand so I kind of educated myself so to me the support was amazing but I do hear stories where women say oh I was pushed too hard and I couldn't do it and they didn't understand, you know that kind of thing and I was like well I think I was I was just like I'm gonna do it so there wasn't any I didn't even think about bottle feeding. I was just like, I'm going to do it. And so the support was amazing because, uh, and also I used Koala. They did a one-to-one -one, um, breastfeeding consultation because he was cluster feeding at night. So I was up every hour and that was like painful. That was like torture. And they recommended co-sleeping, um, which was a life changer. That was amazing. So I'm still co-sleeping now um so I didn't have you know all the support I received was and oh, I did prenatal classes in Indonesia so I started kind of learning the breastfeeding then um so it was kind of an easy decision for me and I educated myself and the support you know the support was there and also I think with the education we don't necessarily receive that from our families which maybe we used to in the past you know, but now it's kind of maybe skipped a few generations. Um, so that's why we have to then go out and seek, edu you know, educational opportunities to understand it. Just going back to my mom, I think one of the key things that has helped me is when I gave birth, she took care of me to be able, then I was able to breastfeed. So she made food for me, you know, she bought me drinks and, you know, making sure I was sleeping, all these kind of things, which took care of my physical needs and she was cleaning and washing my clothes and all this kind of stuff, which allowed me to then focus on the breastfeeding, which I know a lot of women don't have that. When he was nine or 10 weeks, I was ready to then do things like baby groups. And that's when everything opened. 
So I don't think I've kind of suffered in the same way other women did who couldn't do anything. They were stuck at home. I, I didn't feel like that. And when I was pregnant, oh, I was, I was in Indonesia until I was six months pregnant. And then I flew back and it was like winter and I was getting ready to give birth. So I kind of went into hibernation anyway. So I didn't really feel affected that much by the lockdowns. And after I gave birth, it was kind of nice that you didn't have the pressure from people. You know, we were just ourselves and we could just get used to things. And um, so I didn't feel that affected by it. Like I know some women have it's been hard for a lot of women. I kind of maybe I was lucky with my timings of things. And I feel like in this country, the rates are so low and it's just something we don't see, you know, and um, I've got really good friends in Barcelona and we work together in Borneo and <clears throat> my friend Joanna, she breastfed, she's breastfeeding both her kids and we were living together and every night she'd be breastfeeding and it just became a normal part of what I'd see. Um, and she says in Barcel in Spain, all of Barcelona, it's unusual for women not to breastfeed. Like the rates are kind of, I think it's a reverse. Like here it's more likely to bottle feed, whereas there it's more likely to breastfeed. Um, and I think in the UK, we just need to be just more exposed to it and not for it to be hidden away in a room or like I was in the doctor's and I'd had the appointment and I breastfed my son in the waiting room. And I was in the corner, I was quite discreet. I was fine. Because um, I'm not really bothered about feeding outside and like whatever. And two members of staff came up to me and were like, oh, do you want to go into the into the room there? We've got a private room if you want to feed him. And I was like, I know they were being nice because they're trying to consider it. Maybe I feel a bit awkward. But at the same time, it was kind of like hiding me away. That's how it felt as well. Because I was like, oh no, I'm totally fine. You know, I don't, I, I, I must have looked relaxed because I'm always relaxed, you know, with that situation. But it was almost like, oh, you need to be, you know, hidden. Um, and I think we just need to see it. Even things like in um, children's books, you know, not seeing bottle fed babies, seeing breastfed babies. Have you seen on cafes where it's like breastfeed and friendly? To me, I get the, I get it. I know what they're trying to do. But at the same time, it's like, you kind of saying there's places that are unfriendly. <laughs> it's like, shouldn't yeah. every place be breastfeeding friendly? For me, I put yeah. it down to three main things, like my education, the education I did, I was determined to do it and I did get the right support. So they're the thing, I always think, what would I tell someone else who wants to breastfeed? there will be the three things, is get an education. You need to be determined because there's times when it's quite tough. Because sometimes I think you hear that you hear um, I'm going to try, I'm going to try and do it, but that's not the same as I'm going to do it. 